Hi everyone, this is Heather from the Purdue Writing Lab. In this video, we will be talking about paragraph organization and flow. Whether you're still drafting your thesis or dissertation, or in the process of revising your project, it's important to think about your writing on a paragraph level. Strong, clear paragraphs act like solid building blocks that create the foundation for your argument. Throughout this video, we'll talk about three major components of paragraph-level writing to consider, including unity, coherence, and development. To begin, let's start with a five-minute warm-up activity. For this exercise, choose one paragraph from your current writing project. If you're still drafting, you're welcome to look at a paragraph from your written work or from one of your sources. Take a few moments to read carefully through your chosen paragraph. Try to locate the different components of that paragraph. Do you see a clear introductory sentence? Does the paragraph have a clear sense of focus, meaning does it address one topic in a clear way? What is the main point being expressed through that paragraph, and where specifically do you see that point being made? Because this is a time for self-reflection, it might also be helpful to assess your strengths and growth areas in terms of your paragraph-level writing. We can discuss our reflections in our small group discussion. Please pause the video here and set a five-minute timer for yourself. See you soon! Welcome back, everyone! The first component of strong paragraph writing that we're going to talk about in this video is the idea of unity. When we think about unity in paragraph writing, we're talking about the importance of addressing one idea per paragraph. When you're writing a long and complex body of work, like a thesis or dissertation, it can feel tempting to try to cram multiple elements and ideas together into one paragraph. Thinking of unity reminds us that each paragraph should concern itself with a single focus. If you find that your paragraphs tend to introduce one idea or major point of discussion before wandering off topic, try to invite yourself to rethink the pacing of your writing. The chart on this slide represents a paragraph outline for a thesis or dissertation chapter. During your next writing period, it might be helpful to revisit this chart and map out the singular point that you will address or are addressing in each of your paragraphs. Keep in mind that complex ideas might have to unfold over multiple paragraphs, and that's okay. One of the most helpful ways to motivate you to maintain a sense of unity in your paragraphs is to use clear topic sentences. A topic sentence is a sentence that indicates in a general way what idea or argument the paragraph is going to deal with. Despite the fact that topic sentences can occur anywhere within a paragraph, such as the first sentence, the last sentence, or somewhere in the middle, an easy way to make sure your reader understands the topic of a paragraph is to put your topic sentence near the beginning or at the very beginning of your paragraph. In addition to using the chart on this slide to specify which topic you're going to cover within each paragraph, it might also be helpful to locate the topic sentence for that paragraph as well. If you need an example of a topic sentence, here are two paragraphs borrowed from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill's Writing Lab. The first paragraph reads, Piranhas rarely feed on large animals. They eat smaller fish and aquatic plants. When confronted with humans, piranhas' first instinct is to flee, not attack. Their fear of humans makes sense. Far more piranhas are eaten by people than people are eaten by piranhas. If the fish are well fed, they won't bite humans. The second example on this slide is the exact same as the first, except that it offers a clear topic sentence. It reads, Although most people consider piranhas to be quite dangerous, they are, for the most part, entirely harmless. 
This example shows how topic sentences zero in on the so what of a paragraph, meaning that they highlight and synthesize the main point or argument for that particular paragraph. If you find that your paragraphs are missing topic sentences, try to challenge yourself to draft or revise with this in mind during your next writing time. Moving on from unity, the second component of strong writing that we'll talk about in this video is coherence. Coherence in paragraph writing is the trait that makes a paragraph easily understandable to a reader. You can help to create a sense of coherence in your paragraphs by creating logical bridges in your writing. For example, I just offered a logical bridge when I said that we were moving on to this video's second point. Here, one of the most straightforward ways to outline a sense of logic in your paragraphs is to use clear transition words and phrases. Transitions can be used at the end of most paragraphs to help paragraphs flow into one another. Transition sentences or bridges offer important cues to readers to help them trace your argument. To develop a cause and effect relationship, for example, you can use words and phrases like consequently, therefore, thus, or accordingly. Transition words like however, then again, whereas, although, and nevertheless establish a sense of contrast between concepts. Transitions like furthermore, in addition, and similarly help you to further expand an idea and indicate a sense of continuation. Finally, transition words can also indicate that you're moving to summarize or reassert your main point. Here you can use phrases like as such or ultimately. In addition to using clear transition words and phrases, there are other verbal bridges that can help you create a sense of coherence within your paragraphs. You can help make your paragraphs more coherent by defining and repeating keywords to help your reader follow your ideas. If you find that you are repeating keywords to the point of sounding repetitive or redundant, try to alternate between a small collection of synonyms. Another helpful reminder about verbal bridges is to ensure a clear use of pronouns. You can do this by making sure your reference are clear. If you find yourself using multiple pronouns in a row, this might be an invitation to restate who you are talking about. Coherent paragraphs are important because they make sure your reader can follow your point or your argument. Your reader shouldn't have to work hard to follow what you're saying. Instead, it's our job as writers to deliver our points in a clear way. The third component about strong paragraph writing that we'll cover today is the idea of development. Well-developed paragraphs ensure that the topic of a paragraph, which is introduced by a topic sentence, of course, is discussed fully and adequately. A good paragraph will contain the following four elements. You can think of the acronym TTEB, transition, topic sentence, evidence, and brief wrap-up. A transition sentence leading in from a previous paragraph assures smooth reading. This acts as a handoff from one idea to the next. A topic sentence, like we've talked about before, tells the reader what you will be discussing in that paragraph. Specific evidence and analysis that supports one of your claims and that provides a deeper level of detail than your topic sentence also helps to develop your paragraph. You can also include a brief wrap-up sentence that tells your readers how or why this information supports your paper's thesis. This brief wrap-up is also known as the warrant of your paragraph. The warrant is important to your argument because it connects your reasoning and supports your thesis, and it shows that the information in the paragraph is related to your thesis and help defends it. Let's pause for a moment here and dive a little deeper into the idea of providing evidence in your paragraphs. 
you can develop your paragraphs by giving evidence by considering the following. Use clear examples in your paragraphs. Cite your data by providing facts and statistics, for example. Offer quotes from experts. Remember that when you're providing evidence by quoting an expert, that you unpack or explain or illustrate the importance of that quote. Ask yourself how it supports your main argument. As always, be sure to properly cite your evidence to help maintain your academic and professional ethos. As you can see in the graphic here on the right side of your screen, you can help to organize your paragraph development by starting with broad information and then homing in on your point with more specific detail as you go along. Thinking about paragraph development also helps us to consider the idea of balance in our paragraph writing. Make sure your paragraphs are proportional to your paper. Because paragraphs do less work in shorter papers, it makes sense to have short paragraphs for short papers and longer paragraphs for longer papers. If you have a few very short paragraphs that are only a few sentences long, think about whether they are really parts of one larger paragraph together. Can they be combined? Or ask yourself if you can add details to support each point in each of your paragraphs to make it longer and more developed. While paragraph lengths will vary from paragraph to paragraph and depending on the writer's purpose and writing style, try to be wary of paragraphs that have only two or maybe three sentences because that's usually a good indication that that paragraph isn't fully developed. Similarly, when paragraphs span over pages, this might indicate that you need to split up that large paragraph into smaller portions. If you're curious about when to start a new paragraph, look for moments in your writing when you begin a new idea or point. New ideas should always start new paragraphs. If you have an extended idea that spans across multiple paragraphs, each new point within that idea should have its own paragraph. You can also look for moments in your writing when you're trying to contrast information or ideas. Separate paragraphs can serve to contrast sides in a debate, different points in an argument, or any other sort of difference that you're trying to highlight. We've made it to the end of our presentation on paragraphs. Thank you for learning with me. I look forward to discussing paragraphs with you in our small group. Happy writing and revising, everyone. Until next time.